the name the test shown for inguinal hernia so now we are going to see the basics in hernias so these are very basic concepts you should never have a doubt in the basics so the name the test shown in the hernia below so the picture below shows a very important test called as finger invagination test please remember this test cannot be done for females it can be done only for males grasp the scrotal skin and usually you should put a little finger not the index finger as shown here go with the little finger into the superficial ring and into the canal put the finger through the canal and examine the canal so when i am putting the finger like this i ask the patient to cough if i feel the impulse on the pulp of the finger it is called as direct hernia if i feel the pulse in the tip of the finger it is called as indirect hernia this test is as abandoned due to discomfort for the patient now we are not advising the surgeons or the students to do this test so if the hernia is felt in the pulp it is direct hernia if it is impulse is felt at the tip it is indirect hernia the only advantage of this finger invagination test is it tests the posterior wall weakness it can test the posterior wall weakness can be tested by this finger invagination test okay so this is a very important test called as deep ring occlusion test deep ring occlusion test dro deep ring occlusion so make the patient lie down reduce the hernia and identify the deep ring half inch above the mid inguinal point and keep your thumb compressed on the deep ring for example if this is a deep ring compress it with your thumb like this and ask the patient to cough if the patient is coughing if direct hernia hernia appears in a direct hernia hernia appears in a indirect hernia hernia not appears that's all hernia not appears in indirect hernia so where are the patients you can get indirect hernia indirect hernia but hernia appears indirect hernia but hernia appears hernia appears in which are all the indirect hernias so indirect hernia where the hernia can appear back again is number 1 dilated deep ring when the deep ring is very much big size when the deep ring is very much big size it can appear again big size deep ring it can appear again number 1 because you cannot compress the entire deep ring with one thumb so dilated deep ring pantalon hernia there is a direct as well as indirect hernias you can have the thing appearing so number 3 you have not done properly faulty technique you have not compressed the deep ring correctly so faulty technique pantalon hernia dilated deep ring all these are indirect hernias but it can appear it can appear hernia can appear in indirect hernias usually in indirect hernia hernia will not appear where are the places in indirect hernia the hernia appears is dilated deep ring pantalon hernia and faulty technique okay don't forget this and in deep ring occlusion test femoral hernia also appears femoral hernia is different no so it will appear so which all hernias can appear on appear back is direct hernia can appear back femoral hernia can appear back pantaloon hernia can appear back so the three hernias which will appear back on deep ring occlusion test are direct femoral pantaloon indirect hernias will usually never appear this is three finger technique called as zeeman's technique zeeman's technique is three finger test so you have to keep the three fingers one finger is kept on the deep ring okay this is a deep ring another finger kept on superficial ring another finger kept on saphenous opening so at that time you should keep three fingers like this okay three fingers are kept in three openings and ask the patient to cough if the impulse felt at deep ring it is indirect hernia the impulse felt at superficial ring it is direct hernia the impulse felt at saphenous opening it is femoral hernias so don't forget these three hernias indirect direct and femoral according to the impulse we have three different hernias indirect direct and femoral hernias so this is a very basic three test don't forget deep ring occlusion test finger invagination test and zeeman's or clinical test used in hernias and another basic thing which you should not forget in uh, in hernia is meshes used in hernia these are all very basic concepts you should not have any doubt 
there are two types of mesh one mesh which will be netted like small small holes will be seen this is a typical netted mesh another mesh will have no small defects and it will be like a flat sheet so flat sheet mesh is usually not used nowadays so we are only using net mesh having pores that allow the when i am keeping a pore the tissues will grow in between the pores and will hold the mesh and allows the native tissue in growth and becomes integrated into the host tissue this is a net mesh whereas a sheet mesh sheet mesh is different sheet mesh will not allow the tissue in growth and since that tissue in growth will happen and hold the mesh no need of fixation in case of net mesh no need of fixation with the sutures or tackers but in sheet mesh you have to need a tackers or sutures are used tackers or sutures are used for sheet mesh so lightweight and heavy weight mesh lightweight mesh is 40 grams per meter square heavy weight mesh is 80 grams per meter square so this lightweight mesh has a large pores a less shrinkage better comfort and better tissue integration better tissue integration better comfort less shrinkage whereas heavy weight mesh is having more shrinkage and painful therefore heavy weight meshes are not used nowadays so mostly we use mesh which are 80 grams per meter square or less we use a net mesh so net mesh lightweight mesh is what we are using in practice net mesh and a lightweight mesh is what we are using in practice and similarly there are two types of mesh synthetic mesh and biological mesh biological mesh and synthetic mesh synthetic mesh commonly used is non absorbable proline mesh polyester polytetrafluoroethylene these are all various meshes so in this you should never forget proline mesh is hydrophobic hydrophobic means it resists the bacteria entering to the mesh so it resists bacterial ingrowth it will not allow the water to come inside so it resists hydrophilic is can encourage microvascular ingrowth so can resist microvascular ingrowth but polyester meshes are all not commonly used the commonly used mesh is proline mesh so polytetrafluoroethylene is a flat sheet as i told you flat mesh and inert to tissue ingrowth and adhesion formation we use ptfe mesh whenever we feel there may be an adhesion but they are also less commonly used and we have nowadays absorbable meshes made up of polyglycolic acid collagen and polyhydroxybutyrate they are all not used in hernia repair please remember absorbable meshes are not used in hernia repair they are used in temporary abdominal closures and if there is a suture made to strengthen the suture line that's all otherwise absorbable meshes are not used in hernias so the most commonly used mesh is proline mesh biological meshes are just provide a scaffold to encourage new vascular ingrowth fibroblast proliferation and collagen formation they get rapidly destroyed in infection and should not be used in infection so biological mesh are just also used as a temporary closure of the abdomen for example an abdomen which is opened up we have discussed like burst abdomen or any uh, temporary cases uh, wound wound is having a big gap we keep a biological mesh like this we keep a biological mesh like this and it will get naturally get absorbed al along with the body so they are rapidly destroyed in infection and it should not be used in incisional hernia repairs you should not use a biological mesh so what are all the biological mesh bovine pericardium human dermis porcine intestine submucosa so it's a porcine intestine submucosa all these are called as biological meshes so remember the golden rule proline non absorbable mesh should not be exposed to the abdominal contents like bowel as they can cause a dense adhesions to the bowel and only absorbable mesh should be exposed to the bowel contents for example this is abdominal content if i use a proline here like this the bowel and all will come and adhere to this and cause severe problem so bowel adherence can happen with the proline mesh so don't use proline mesh in the abdominal content areas so don't forget therefore in such places we have a mesh in which one side is made up of proline like this another side is made up of an absorbable content like this inner side towards the abdominal side towards the content bowel content side we can use a polycellulose 
or polyglactic acid that is vicryl and this side is proline mesh this is called as a dual mesh outer side is towards the abdominal wall okay this is towards the abdominal wall and this is towards the peritoneal side okay towards the abdominal cavity is made up of this is peritoneal cavity is made up of polycellulose towards the wall is made up of proline this is a typical dual mesh so i want you to understand the concepts of mesh please understand the concepts of mesh i am going to show you the various layers of abdomen this is the skin this is skin this is the anterior rectus sheath this is anterior rectus sheath so anterior rectus sheath what is it what are the layers then this is external oblique muscle okay remember this is external oblique muscle this is external oblique muscle what's the next muscle is the next muscle is internal oblique muscle this is internal oblique muscle this is a linea alba center point this is internal oblique muscle then comes the rectus abdominis muscle this is rectus abdominis muscle sorry this is transverse abdominis muscle so don't forget transverse abdominis the external oblique and this is internal oblique and comes the most important layer all of you know what is this layer that is the most important layer called as fascia transversalis and then comes our important basic layer that is a peritoneum this is peritoneal layer and here there are bowel contents please remember these are the bowel contents inside so hernia is nothing but something coming out like this through this through this through this through this place there is a hernia coming out so now i can keep mesh in three methods method number 1 i can keep a mesh just below the skin on the anterior rectus sheath this mesh method is called as onlay mesh i am telling you all proline meshes i am keeping proline mesh onlay mesh this is a onlay mesh kept on the anterior wall on the top of the muscle or fascia in the subcutaneous space is onlay mesh this is onlay mesh and once upon a time people used one mesh called as inlay mesh which is kept into the defect like this which is no more advised it is inlay mesh it is abandoned because it is not going to cover the defect in a wider way the concept is if there is a defect you should cover it 2 to 5 cm all around so mesh is mesh should cover a defect 2 to 5 cm all around that is a rule if there is a defect it should cover this is a defect means i should keep it 2 to 5 cm on all around so therefore inlay mesh is kept within the defect is no more used it is because it it can cause more chances of recurrence therefore it is abandoned then came a very interesting mesh called as sublay mesh deep to the muscles in the abdominal wall like this it is one sublay mesh sublay is of many types this is a sublay mesh this is sublay mesh which is kept extra peritoneally and this is sublay mesh which is kept intra peritoneally please remember intra peritoneal sublay mesh this is extra peritoneal sublay mesh i already told you what should never be done intra peritoneally i should not keep proline mesh if i keep proline mesh intra peritoneally what will happen it can cause adherence of the bowel therefore extra peritoneal mesh is preferred which will be kept in between the muscle layers as shown here never do intra peritoneal mesh due to risk of adhesions don't do intra peritoneal mesh due to risk of adhesion so this is from bailey and love this is onlay mesh above this is sublay extra peritoneal this is sublay intra peritoneal sublay intra peritoneal should never be done don't forget as of now these are all discussions for proline so there came a new operation now called as as i told you this is a fascia transversalis this is peritoneum see now i am going to show you a new method of mesh in which i keep a mesh which is dual mesh one side made up of proline and another side made up of vicryl or polycellulose this is a very costly mesh mesh it will be costing around 25000 rupees it is a dual mesh which i can keep it by laparoscopy during laparoscopy these are all bowel means in an incisional hernia like this if there is a hernia here like this i can keep a mesh this is abdominal wall i can keep a mesh like this from inside this surgery is called as i palm it is laparoscopically done 
intraperitoneal onlay mesh this is a latest treatment of choice for incisional hernias so the treatment of choice for incisional hernias from bailey and love is i form intraperitoneal i can go and keep it inside like this i can keep the mesh from inside called as intraperitoneal onlay mesh it is usually done with only dual mesh which is a very costly mesh okay dual mesh so don't forget intraperitoneal onlay mesh it is a very basic concepts you should not forget about the basics of mesh repairs okay